Hi folks, Wooden Boat Dan here. It is December 27th, two days after Christmas. I'm out in my shop working on my peeler skiff. Thought I'd give you a little update here. So what I've been working on the last couple days is putting the bottom of the boat together. And the bottom it consists of two halves. So the bottom is split down the middle and each of those halves is two pieces that are puzzle jointed together. And then on top of those is a doubler, which goes down the center of the boat, which acts almost like a skeg uh, to help the boat go straight and also reinforces it. So let me show you here what I got. So here's the bottom of the boat. You can see the doubler down the center there, which I just uh, glued that, epoxy that on yesterday, and I used drywall screws, inch and a half, with a little bit of plywood, so I don't make a big ding in the, uh, in the doubler. So I got that on there, and now this, uh, and this is all made out of uh, 18 millimeter, three quarter inch of Kumi plywood, and, it's, and here's my puzzle joints here. So now this bottom is getting pretty heavy. I'm gonna need help just turning this thing over because it probably weighs 150, 200 pounds maybe. Uh, so I'm working on that. A Couple days ago, I built this wood rack here because I had these pieces of the boat laying all over the floor on a tarp and I couldn't move around. So I thought I gotta get these things off the ground. I don't want them to get damaged. So I built this little cart here Took me, everything takes time, right? Three or four hours to build this thing, but I've got all my parts on there. And I've got some parts over here. There's a transom down there. And this thing is on five inch casters that I got from Amazon for 35 bucks, which is a really good deal. So I can move this cart around my shop and uh, that's really handy and it protects my wood. Uh, here are the sides of the boat which are two pieces. Uh, so I, I laminated both sides together yesterday using these puzzle joints, which are really amazing. They fit so snug that everything is aligned up perfectly. And then over here are these three part whale strakes, which I'm getting ready to laminate together. These are half inch half or three eighths, I'm not, I can't remember. But anyway, these go along the shear line of the boat to reinforce the shear line uh, once I get it set up. So that's where I'm at right now, folks. So a couple things I've learned. One is after you uh, do these puzzle joints here, you end up with epoxy on top. And the easiest way to get that off rather than sanding. The problem with sanding all that epoxy off is that the epoxy is much harder than the wood, so you'll end up sanding through the wood. So I got this little cabinet scraper from CLC Boats, and if you take your heat gun and heat the epoxy up, and then you can just use this to scrape, and that stuff, will epoxy will scrape right off when you heat it. So I got a nice a uh, clean joint here. I scraped off as much as I could and then I sanded it with 120 on my disc sander. So I got a real good joint there. So a couple things I've learned so far when you're doing the uh, puzzle joints, joining with the puzzle joints, it's best to sand the edges of those just a little bit before you put them together. And because if you don't, they're very, they're pretty hard to get together. I had done the first three or four joints, sanding them first, and then I thought, well, I'll try it without, maybe save a little time. And it, it was much more difficult to get the two pieces together. So take some 120 paper and sand the edges of the puzzle joints uh, before you put them together with epoxy. Uh, the other thing is I used small containers to mix my epoxy. These are like coffee cups which hold, I don't know, four, five, six, seven ounces. But when I was uh, laminating the doubler for the bottom, 
It's like I had to mix up like four of these, which is a real pain. So I'm going to get some bigger containers and mix larger volumes of epoxy because I don't want to spend that much time. And the epoxy, even though it's a slow hardener, it can start to cure and, and cause problems. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do differently is uh, coming up, I've got coming up, I've got to do uh, laminate the transom together. That's two pieces. Uh, and also I'm going to fiberglass cloth, put fiberglass cloth on the inside of the bottom. And I've never used peel ply before. It's a release fabric. But I'm going to go buy some of that today or tomorrow and use that uh, because from what I hear from a lot of people is it'll save you a lot of time sanding because you put your epoxy and your glass on and then you lay your peel ply over that and smooth it all out and once the epoxy dries you take the peel ply off Unfortunately, you can't re reuse it, but you take it off and you have a very smooth surface that requires almost no sanding. And you can add more epoxy to your weave of your uh, fiberglass, I hear, so that you might only have to put one coat of, of epoxy on the fiberglass cloth rather than up to three coats with possible sanding in between. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to give you an update when I figure out if that's working or not. Well, that's the update for today, folks. I will keep you posted as I make progress. I'm having a lot of fun on this boat. I love building boats. I think I like building them almost more than using them. I mean, I love using them, don't get me wrong, but on a cold, wintry day like this, it's 46 degrees and raining sideways here in Stanford, Washington. It's nice to be in my warm shop. Well, is it warm? 56 degrees. That's not too bad for an outdoor worker, right? <laughs> Anyway, it's nice to be out in my shop working and enjoying uh, this build because I can't be out on the water right now anyway. And also, if you haven't uh, checked it out, check out my podcast, Hooked on Wooden Boats. It's on iTunes, uh, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, all the major uh, apps. Anyway... Uh, keep the bright side up and the barnacled side down. Wooden boat Dan over and out. Take care.